So this year we built our very own solar power system and we just finished up a couple months ago when we got this last set of solar panels up here on the roof. So now we're producing our own electricity. We have batteries to store extra power in so we can actually make electricity at night or when the grid goes down. And any extra power that we create, we can sell it back to the power company. So this was a DIY system. We did all the work ourselves, so we don't have any labor costs, but I've got everything totaled up. So I know how much all the equipment cost, all the mounting hardware cost, all of the material and wire. I've got all the costs, even maybe some hidden costs that some people may have not considered. So now that I've ran the system for a while, I've gone through all the data and I can calculate up roughly how much power this will produce in a year. And then I can tell you exactly how long it'll take for this system to actually pay for itself. So let's get into it. So as I go through the cost breakdown, I've got it broken into sections. The first one is gonna be the major equipment. That's gonna be those really expensive items. Let's go ahead, we'll just get them out of the way. So this is our solar power room. This is the heart of our system. But the main piece is the Canadian Solar EP Cube. And this is a hybrid solar inverter that is scalable. So you can, you can expand the system, you can kind of size it any way you want. You can change the number of batteries, you can change the number of inverters, and size it exactly the way you want it. So we have a total of six batteries stacked up here, 20 kilowatt hours of storage, and a single 7600 watt inverter, which provides most of our power needs. So I looked this up on Signature Solar's website this morning, and for six batteries in a system exactly this size, the total cost is $12,999, basically $13,000 to be able to buy this whole setup right here. So on this wall we have a transfer switch, a breaker panel, and a disconnect for our grid power. Not all of this is required, some of this is just my preference to have it. And to save money, these are all 100 amp rated panels. Now the EP Cube can actually do 200 amps and pass that through but I built everything to 100 amps just to keep my costs lower. So the transfer switch was $165, breaker panel 167, and the disconnect was like 72, 74. So the equipment on this wall cost about $400. If it was 200 amp rated equipment, this would have been well over a thousand. So now for the cost of the solar panels. I actually have two different size panels here on the roof because I bought them at separate times. So this first set was 315 watt panels, I bought 12 of them for a total of 3,780 watts. And I got these off of Signature Solar for 52 cents a watt. So when I went back to buy more solar panels, these were actually sold out at Signature Solar and they were actually discontinued. So I ended up buying these 460 watt panels. I ended up buying 16 of them and this is 7,360 watts right here. And I was able to get these for 57 cents a watt, and that's still a pretty good deal. So we ended up with 11,140 watts worth of solar panels, and that ended up costing us just over $6,000. So there's one more cost with these main pieces of equipment, and that is the shipping cost. These are heavy batteries, they're big solar panels, they get shipped by semi-truck to your house, so you have to pay for freight. And I wish I would have ordered everything all at once. Instead, I broke it into a few different orders and I had to pay freight every time. So I had a total of $1,005 in shipping costs. So the total cost for the, the main pieces of equipment comes up to around $20,500. So our next expense is the mounting system for the solar panels. So you can either do a ground mount or you can do a roof mount. And we decided to do the roof mounted system. They were up here, out of the way. They weren't taken up any real estate, they weren't taking up our yard. And up here, I don't really have any shading issues, they're always in the sun. So when you do a roof mounted system, you do have to buy a rapid shutdown system. Um, so that's an additional cost per solar panel. That's about another $40 you have to purchase per solar panel. So up here I have two different systems for mounting solar panels. This is a snap and rack system. I ordered it online, I had to pay freight shipping. So it ended up costing a pretty good amount. And this is an Iron Ridge system, and I bought that off of my local electrical supply house. So I didn't have to pay freight shipping, I just had to go there and pick it up. So I think the second time I got a little bit smarter trying to buy it locally. But the total cost for all of the mounting system and the shutdown modules for, this, for all these solar panels is around 2,800 bucks. 
So now I'm going to get into the costs of all the little parts and pieces, conduit and wire, all the little things that people don't necessarily remember to budget for and they add up quickly. Now I would like to say that I have an electrical degree. I've got 25 years doing electrical work in an industrial setting. So people in that field seem to have certain preferences, certain things, they, the way they like things. And that tends to complicate things and make things cost a little bit more expensive. So my system is maybe a little bit more complex than what you have to do. And, and part of that is going to be this wireway here, right? This is one of my preferences. I wanted the system to look nice and neat. This is an 8 inch wireway. This is 6 foot long. This is 2 foot long. This whole wireway right here cost me just under $400 to be able to have that. And that's more of a, that's more of a want than a need, right? That's just, I just want it to look good. Another cost is going to be your electrical conduit. And depending on how close things are together, that could be fairly cheap. But the farther they get apart, it starts adding up fairly quickly. And you can see our solar power is over there on the workshop. And I had to get that power over to our house. So I've, I had to bury a two inch conduit. I had to trench it in a two inch conduit, I think 120 feet long to, to get the two buildings connected together. And then I had conduit inside each building as well. So I had quite a bit more conduit than what people would normally have. And that totaled it up to around 853 bucks. So another cost that's gonna vary quite a bit depending on how far apart things are from each other is gonna be your wiring. Uh, of course, I had to run the power wiring from the solar power over here to the house. So I definitely have some additional costs when it comes to wiring that most people probably won't. And then you have your internal wiring, you have your, your, your wiring for your solar panels. There's a lot of wire that goes into the system. And for me, the total cost was $1,620. So when you build a system like this, there's always those small things that just like nickel and dime you the whole way. All those small things just add up by the time you're finished. And it may be like zip ties to keep the wires neat, maybe some ground bars um, that you need to install. You've got wire nuts, you've got crimp on terminals, you've got solar panel connectors, you may need terminal blocks. I mean, there's just a lot of little things that add up over trying to get this thing finished, right? And what surprised me when I got it all totaled I ended up spending 412 bucks on the small things. All right, I've only got three things left on the cost of this project. One is gonna be labels. You do have to label everything properly um, so that you meet the code requirement and can pass your inspection. So I ended up spending about $65 on labels. Another cost I had was actually with the power company. I had to put in an application to do a grid tie and be able to sell back power to the power company. So that application cost $300. To, to just put in the application with the company. So that was a fee some people may have, some people may not. And the last thing is gonna be house insurance. So I just got done putting thousands of dollars worth of equipment and solar panels on this barn, and that has increased the value or maybe replacement cost, right? So now the insurance company needs to cover all that equipment, and that does increase your insurance premium. Mine went up about $400 a year just for adding the solar. So the total cost of this system is $27,373.08. But there is a catch to that because the federal government has a 30% tax credit. So they're going to give 30% of that money back. So my effective cost in the end, once I get my refund, will be only $19,161.16. So right now I buy power for 15 cents a kilowatt hour and that's the same price all day long. It's not, it doesn't vary by what time it is. And if this was a net metered system, so if they gave you the 100% credit for everything you sold them, this system would actually produce $2,257 a year and it would pay itself off in eight and a half years. But this system is not a net metered system. I actually buy it for 15 cents. They buy it back from me for three cents. So basically my electric cooperative makes it almost impossible for you to zero your electric bill. I have to sell back five times what I use to zero out my bill. So my system stores the power in batteries during the day and then it uses those batteries every night to make power until the batteries get down to 20%. And then it'll switch to 
the grid. So I'm only on the grid a few hours a day. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you yesterday's data. It was almost the perfect day for solar. So the blue line represents the grid. So when you see that line go up, that's power I'm buying. When you see that line down, that's when I'm selling it back to the power company. Now the green line is my battery state of charge, um, how full my batteries are. And then the light green, like hump right in the middle, that's when the sun's out and that's when I'm collecting power from the sun. And you can see that's a very short period of time, maybe only a third of the day. I mean, it is December, so it's winter time almost. Um, but there's a very small portion of the day where you actually are pulling power in. So when you look at the blue line, at the beginning of the day it goes up, maybe for maybe for an hour, hour and a half. That's when I'm buying power. I bought about three and a half kilowatt hours. Later on the day you see it go down and I'm selling power back to the com power company. I sold about 11 kilowatt hours. Not quite five times what I purchased. So my electric bill still was not zeroed out, even on a perfect day like today. But you can see, only using the grid for maybe an hour and a half, I'm almost completely off grid and don't need the grid at all on a sunny day. But there's always a point in time during the day once the batteries get charged that I have extra power. There's nowhere for it to go except to sell back to the power company for pennies, for three cents a kilowatt hour. And since I'm selling back at such a cheap rate, it makes the power that this system produces less per year. So this, the value of the power this makes a year is only $1,806 and that's only due to the cheap buyback rate from the power company. So that makes my system take a total of 10.6 years for it to finally pay for itself. So I know what you're thinking, 10.6 years, will your batteries even last that long? And the answer is yes, they are designed to last that long. The, uh, the batteries actually have a 10 year warranty on them and they're rated for 6,000 cycles. So a cycle is a discharge, so if you discharge these once a day, that's 6,000 days, that's 16.4 years. And at 6,000 cycles, they say that this is 80% of the original capacity. So it's not that the batteries are bad, they only store 80% of what they used to. So let's say at 15 years, we decide to replace these. So if this pays for itself in 10.6, I still have another four and a half years of use after it pays for itself. And in that four and a half years, it can make another $7,900 worth of electricity. And that's using today's prices. So in the end, this will pay for itself and then it should start paying me back money. And if energy prices go up, it'll pay itself off quicker and it'll start paying me back even more. So right now, our solar power system is making 82% of our power needs throughout the year. So it's not making 100% of our power. Um, we're not off grid, but we do feel fairly independent. Um, if the power goes out, we may not even know it. The power stays on. Um, we got the battery backup. If we manage our loads, like don't run the oven, the dryer, and the air conditioner, we can probably go for days um, in a power outage. So I think that that's definitely something that helps give you a sense of security. So besides making your own power, lowering your electric bill, we're gaining that sense of security that everything's going to be okay, you know, if we end up having some kind of big storm or power outage. So uh, overall, I'm happy with the system that I have. Um, I can only guess on the longevity of the system. I'm just going by the specs and the warranties. So I won't know the true costs, of course, until... 15 years are up so but I'm hoping that it turns out as good as I said in this video today or even better because energy prices are bound to go up so I'm sure in the end it'll end up being better than what I stated in this video but I think that's going to be it for this one guys so thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one